So once you get the files, uh, switch the render engine over to cycles and you'll be able to uh, view the planet. Uh, you can't view this with easy, you can't use it because of the way uh, volumetrics work and the way um, transparency works in Eevee. So just keep in mind that you'll have to uh, render all this in cycles. So once you get it, uh, to start messing with the settings you want to go to the shading tab. And let's first mess with the planet. So let me go into rendered view and let's start messing with the planet. You're going to want to find the earth node which is just the name for the node for the planet and uh, you're going to see I made a custom node set up for a procedural planet and you can make any planet basically with this procedural node set up so the first uh, slider is the biome size and as you can see there is different biomes on the planet like different colors so there's a uh, kind of like sandy looking one right over here and then there's like dark green over here and there's light green over there and you can change the size of those by uh, messing with the slider um, and keep in mind with all of these sliders the higher it goes the smaller it goes so higher just means basically more of them which means uh, it's all smaller and more compact so if we move this down to like 0.7 you can see that the biomes actually get really big like the sand takes up all over here the dark green takes all over here and then light green takes all over here but then if we go to like let's say a 12 uh, you can see how the biomes get really small like there is some really small sand there really small sand there and some really small sand there so that's the biome size uh, the biome detail is just the uh, edges um, I don't really mess with that. Uh, I just put it in there, but normally you want to keep it at like, you can go up to 16, or I guess 18. But uh, zero just means like it's going to have some really soft edges. And I usually like to keep it at a higher detail, just because it, it looks better. You can get those more defined um, edges, because with uh, low detail they all kind of just blend in. So the next one is continent size, which affects, I'd say, the biggest part of the planet, which is the uh, different continents on the planet. So again, like biome size, the bigger it is, the uh, smaller the actual continents are, and the smaller the value is, the uh, bigger the actual continents are. So if we go down to a, let's say 1.2, you can see that a massive continent is taking over this side of the planet but if you were to let's say bring it up to a 11 you can see it's more like an island planet with a ton of islands and different continents so let's just let that load for, for a sec so you can see it so yeah some really cool continents all right and then the next one is this is I forgot to name it but it's continent detail so it's the same thing as biome detail it just makes the edges uh, sharper and gives them more detail so if we turn this down to like let's turn it down to a 1 or 0.8 uh, you can see that it's a lot less uh, jagged on the edges but personally I like the jagged because it makes it look uh, more realistic and more like actual coastlines are there. All right, and then the next node is all the color nodes. So um, the first thing I want to go over is the custom color mix factor. So by default, each planet is going to have an Earth kind of color to it. So this is like the default Earth color in the grass and the biomes and stuff. But like, if I were to change the biome one color to red, uh, biome 2 color to purple, and then the tint, which is more just like a tertiary color, it's not really a tint, uh, to green, and then I turn the custom color mix factor to 1, you can see that it has changed all of the biomes to this color uh, palette. And um, uh, the custom color mix factor all it does is just at zero, it's normal earth. At one, it's the custom color uh, palette. 
And then the next node is the ocean color, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Make it red, the ocean is red. Uh, you make it purple, you got a purple ocean. And then this next one is just a slider that turns it to ocean or no ocean. But let's make the water like green, just so you can see that better. So this is ocean, all that green is the ocean, and as you can see, now there's no ocean. So that covers the planet shader. I mean, I guess we can go over outputs. Just plug in shader to surface, displacement to displacement, and then the bottom shader to volume. Uh, you don't need, you don't need to really do volume though. Uh, volume is just there for like extra added realism, but you can't even tell that's there. So I usually don't put it. All right, and then next one to go over is the cloud node. So this is another custom shader. Um, it's also procedural, so let's go over the rotation. The rotation is just literally the rotation of the clouds. It's pretty self-explanatory. This could be good for like animation, animating the clouds, and actually animating the planet, because you can animate the keyframes. And then next one is scale, which is uh, the scale for all the big clouds in it. So you, you put it to point 0.1, there's going to be like one cloud you put it to like 3.5 there's gonna be a ton of clouds that just take over there but uh, I like to keep mine on like the 1.3 because it gives you those nice like clouds that are just spanning over like continents okay and then the next node is a cloud distortion so as you can see the clouds are very wavy and distorted, but if I were to turn the cloud distortion to like uh, 0 0.5, you can see that they get really like faded, and there's not really a defined border, and they're just kind of mist clouds. So I like to keep mine at like 7, and that makes it like, it makes it twisty, and it makes it very opaque and very cloudy. Okay, and then the next node is a amount of large clouds. So as you can see, uh, there's a lot of large clouds in here. But if I were to turn this up to one, you can see that there's zero large clouds. And if I were to do it completely to zero, you'd see that large clouds kind of take over the environment. So I would put it on 0.1. And then the next slider is the amount of medium clouds. So let's just zoom in a bit. As you can see, there's a bunch of like medium clouds dotted all over the landscape, and if I turn that all the way up, that just get rid of them completely. I mean, I I left the option in there, but I personally would not take out all the medium clouds just because the medium clouds really give it extra re realism. And then toggle on and off, that just toggles all clouds on and off. So that's the end of the procedural clouds node. Let's move on to the atmosphere node. So this is another simple node. Uh, it really is just a uh, volumetric shader and a couple of Fresnel and transparency shader. Um, but basically, uh, let me just expand this so you can see what it says. First uh, color picker is a main atmosphere color picker and this just chooses the atmosphere color. So if I want to turn it to pink uh, we now have a pink atmosphere, and then the secondary atmosphere color is uh, it's really just fills in the area. So if I were to make it blue, you can see that the inside is now blue. But uh, if you're going to use that, I suggest not making it so extreme. Like if you leave it like near the white area, it gives it like a nice hue, but it doesn't completely override all the color in the planet. And the next one is atmosphere density. Uh, you turn it up. You can't see the planet because the atmosphere is super dense. And then you turn it down. And you can't see the atmosphere because the atmosphere isn't dense at all. It's basically not there. So I like to keep mine somewhere around two. It doesn't really matter that much as long as you can like still see the planet. Download it wherever I have the link uh, in the description. And uh, subscribe and... Enjoy making planets.